dear ones, dear friends, brothers and sisters in the Lord, and anybody else that happens to be tuning into this program. Um, I just wanted to uh, introduce a dear, dear friend that I did uh, many, many years ago. It's been about 20 years, I think. I did a, a TV program with KPAL TV, a local TV station, in February 1998. So and it was my first try at having a program, so um, I was kind of a nervous wreck trying to do it. <laughs> but anyway, my, our daughter, my husband and I, Greg's daughter, Beth uh, Tona, was uh, doing the singing on there. And if you go to some of my other uh, videos, you'll see her singing uh, To God Be the Glory and a few others. And uh, she really lets the Holy Spirit use her in that way. So anyway, this was done a long, long time ago, but uh, we just happened to go be going over our videos from the TV program then, and um, it was uh, an amazing testimony of the power and grace of God to keep someone in, tra in the midst of tragedy. I mean, this tragic situation that happened with this dear sister and her husband and what her family all went through but it's about an attack of a, a pit bull that uh, actually her son died from the attack her little three-year-old so um, but her grace that she has her testimony the grace of the Lord Jesus and the power of her testimony is amazing and uh, it was uh, just re-listening to this was, I tell you, what a testimony she had of how God brought her through and the despair and the darkness and how she went all the way down into absolute uh, a state of panic, distress, despair, and how God, only God can bring us through things like that. So, uh just to hear this, I think you'll be amazed to hear how she came through this dark place. You know, many times people go through very dark places as they journey through this life, you know. And uh, it, I tell you, um, her testimony is one you don't want to miss. So anyway, and now we'll uh, turn to the, uh, my husband's going to uh, replay the TV program for you folks and uh, it's a long time ago but that testimony still uh, rings true so the Lord can take us through anything so here we go God bless you and good evening we're so happy this evening to have as our special guest and um, dear friend Rosalind Ben and Rosalind and Sarah a little while we just kind of ran into each other at the uh, restaurant the other day and uh, I felt like, uh, as I was speaking to you, that the Lord wanted you to come on this program and share with us uh, the joy that we always uh, encounter when we're with you. We wanted you to share the source of that joy today. And uh, in Psalms 30:11, it says, You have turned for me my mourning into dancing, and you've uh, caused me to put off my sackcloth, and you have girded me with gladness. Mm. And so that scripture always reminds me of you, Rosalind. So... Uh, this evening we're going to just have you share with us uh, your wonderful testimony of how uh, out of tragedy God brought you into a place of joy. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. And uh, Rosalind, why don't you tell us um, your, your church where you're attending and where it's okay, located at because I remember meeting your uh, pastors the other day when we ran into you and why don't you share um, about where you're going to church and fellowshipping and the address and so if people want to go and visit. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm a sheep and um, my shepherd is Pastor Amos L. Jones and, and we're located at um, 1249 West Avenue I. And um, the Lord moved me from one ministry about a year and a half ago into this ministry where I am now and I bless and praise God for that. Um, I don't have a scripture base that took me through what I went through because um, I wasn't walking with the Lord at the time. 
my son was killed. Um, but what I want to share with you today is how God brought me through the death of my son. And uh, Rosalind, yeah. we know this is really hard for you, but um, I understand that um, that your son was attacked by uh, a pit bull, and could you just... And that was what, seven, you told me 17 years ago? Approximately 17 years ago, my husband and I are coming back into the States from the Philippines, and we were in search of a place to stay. Mm -hmm. And uh, we finally um, found a place of residence in Hawthorne, and um, we were in an apartment complex, and there was a, a, some du duplexes located next door to us. And um, the kids used to play in the drive through area of the duplex. And there were several of them that played there. And, and one of the young men were, was 14 years old. And, and I um, asked that particular young man to watch over my son while he was out playing with the other kids. He was three at the time. And um, while I was in the, in the kitchen washing dishes, there wasn't a window where you could see into the play area. Um, a knock came on the door. And um, my heart dropped to my stomach. I knew that something traumatic had happened. I didn't know what it was, but I knew it was very severe. And I just froze. My husband had just recently came home from work, and so he went outside to see what was going on. Um, after the child had knocked on the door, said that your son had been bitten by um, a dog. He didn't even say what type of dog. And so my husband uh, went outside and um, he picked my son up in his arms and my son closed his eyes and died in, in my husband's arms. Uh, before I even got out there to the scene, they were uh, putting him in the ambulance as I arrived outside and um, technically he, was, he died right there on the grounds because the dog bit him in the main artery that leads to the brain and the blood drained from his um, head area onto the ground. And so he was rushed to the hospital. The paramedics um, took him to um, Hawthorne Community and we met them there. And when we arrived, um, I remember it was like being in another world. I was outside myself. I lost touch with myself. I lost touch with what was going on around me. I heard them saying that they were going to be flying in a uh, surgeon to um, see if they could um, mend the wound that had taken place and restore life to my son's body. And at that time, they hooked him up to um, life support and uh, he never came off the life support machine. And um, he stayed in the hospital for quite some time. They even shifted him to Harbor General because he couldn't get around the clock care that was needed at Hawthorne Community. And um, they didn't let us know that they were shifting. And we woke up one morning and they told us that he was at Harbor General, so we rushed there to be with him. And. Um, I remember walking in the hospital room after a few days of being at Harbor General and um, he began to smell. I didn't want them to take the life support off because I didn't want to let go of him, but I knew that he was gone because of the odor that was in the hospital room. And um, the doctors and everyone began to approach us regarding his organs being donated. And because he was three and so tiny, I didn't want him to be cut anymore. So I didn't want to donate the organs, but um, somehow I found the strength to release the organs um, to someone who may uh, benefit by having them. And um, they, they couldn't find a donor for uh, any of his organs. So um, I was kind of glad about that because I didn't want him cut anymore. And um, at that point, um, things began to go downhill. The pain and the grief was so deeply rooted that I could not even express it outwardly. And um, the only thing that I knew to do was um, cling to 
what the world would cling to and what the, some of the people in the world are clinging to today, and that's alcohol and drugs. I went to alcohol and drugs and um, for comfort and uh, to ease the pain and oh, um, yeah. right. to ease the suffering and uh, to try and release the hurt that I was experiencing. But I found in my pursuit of that that it didn't work. Didn't help. It didn't work. It didn't help at all. And um, but I continued to pursue that avenue because I didn't know any other avenue. And uh, I began to drown really in my in my in self pity, in uh, oppression and depression. And pretty soon um, suicide set in. A spirit of suicide set in. You didn't even want to live anymore. I did not want to live anymore. I fell into hopelessness. And um, I felt that there was no purpose for me to live any longer. And um, one of the things I did was um, I um, drank Drano. Mm. And, and, and it had to be Satan attacking me That's in right. my mind, tormenting spirits that he had sent to attack me. That's right. Because everybody that knows what Drano does, as soon as it con makes contact, it starts to eat away at that which it makes contact with. So it began to eat away at the insides of my mouth, and I rushed around the house trying to get it out. But once it had already hit the moisture of my mouth, it began to eat in my mouth. But God, as you can see, I'm speaking to you at this moment. He restored yeah. uh, my mouth and my vocals and everything. So I'm able to, to speak to you today. Praise the Lord for that. And um, I didn't stop there. Uh, my husband um, stayed with me all this time. And he was by my side, and he was supportive. Um, a lot of times, something like this happens in a relationship, and it pulls you apart from your mate, but it pulled us together. Mm -hmm. uh, somehow, God caused it to draw us closer together, and we began to cling to each other. And um, at one point, it, the suicide attempts got to the point where he was fearful of going to work. Um, because one day he came in and he said he found me on the couch. I have no remembrance of this except him telling me because I was out of it. Um, and he said he picked me up like a child and he took me to a local hospital. We had moved from Hawthorne at this time into another area. And uh, he picked me up as a child and uh, took me to the hospital because I was um, not responding to um, his calls uh, of my name. And uh, when I got to the hospital, um, they began to pump my stomach. They put tubes in me. And uh, I remember um, waking up in the emergency room at the hospital. And I remember them um, telling me uh, where I was and, and, and um, trying to bring me back to um, reality, basically. And when I looked over and saw a girl in cuffs and belts, I realized that I was um, in a hospital setting. And I began to extract the tubes from my body and, and pull it out. And I just simply pulled the tube out and walked out of the hospital. Um, I was identified at that hospital as Jane Doe. Say so they never got a name on me. My husband was angry because they wouldn't let him in, so he never released my name. So. I walked out of the hospital setting as Jane Doe without um, the permission of the doctors. And um, from there, we moved into um, another home uh, here in Palmdale. And I continued to drink. And through it all, God had people praying and interceding for me. Um, I, con after I continued to work in this state. And um, I was like a zombie functioning um, through the hurt and the pain because it's really hard to express that type of hurt and pain to the outside world. You kind of crawl into yourself, into your own world. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I basically did. And um, the Lord put um, a senior in my path by the name of Ruth Williams. I'll never forget her. She's still alive today. And she began to minister the word of God to me. And um, I found my way um, to, um, Crenshaw Christian Center, and I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I didn't stop drinking. I continued to um, keep on in the ways of the world. 
and um, it, it, I'll shorten my testimony. I continued in the ways of the world, and I continued to go to work, go to work, and she continued to minister the love of Christ to me. And um, I, I came out of that ministry, which I didn't, I didn't join. I just came out of it and continued into another ministry where I was hung over at the time. I got baptized in another ministry where, where I was hung over, and then I moved out of that ministry, went to another ministry, and um, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. So I know that my path was directed directed by the Lord from that point on. Once I opened the door and allowed Jesus to come into my heart and steer my footsteps in the direction that he would have me to go, the healing process began. Amen. I was in church Amen. one Sunday and I asked the Lord to purge me of the hurt. Amen. And that's when I was able to release the pain. Until then it was too deep for me to release on my own. And I can sit here before you today and truly say that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. He took the hurt and the pain and he reversed it and turned it into joy. And there is no joy that you can experience outside of the love of Jesus Christ. And uh, I know there's a lot of people that are out there hurting and in pain and going through. And I want you to know that your answer today is Jesus. But you have to make a decision and allow him to come into your heart and be Lord of your life. He's already paid the price. Mm -hmm. He's already shed his blood. But the decision making is up to you. And I praise the Lord that I'm able to sit here and tell you that today. I don't speak because it's a camera setting and I want to be on TV. I'm here because I want to glorify God Amen. and I want you to see Jesus and the love of Christ. Hallelujah. In me that you may be blessed in your situation and accept him as your Lord and Savior and come out of your oppression, come out of your depression, come out of your suicide, suicidal Amen. state, whatever state that you're finding yourself in, hopelessness, whatever it may be, Jesus Christ is your answer. Receive him and let him do what he's done for you, for me. And I just Amen. praise the Lord for the opportunity today. Um, I also want to interject this scripture that weeping endureth for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I'm not going to say that after you come out of your situation that you're not going to continue to go through. Amen. Because you're still going to suffer persecution. That's God's word that we're going to suffer persecution if we walk with him. But you have a source Amen. That's, that, that will never leave you or forsake you. He will continually be with you, and you can pull on that source. And once you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to encourage you to find yourself a ministry that you can get support from. And God has placed people in my path. He's placing me in your path right now to minister to you. So find a ministry make that ministry your home begin to grow in the things of god and let him direct your path from amen. that point on amen. and he will put people in your life trust me he will put people in your life that you can get support amen. from to guide you along the way um i know uh last week herb nero on this uh on this tv station channel 35 um was talking about um attacks by by dogs and your son was attacked by a pit bull right that's correct yeah, so there's a lot of attacks going um, on to people from dogs, um, especially the pit bulls. I've heard a lot of stories about. about I'd, like to, I'd like to say something, not to cut you off, Beth, but I'd like to say something regarding pit bulls. Um, I really didn't know anything about pit bulls until this took place uh, with my son. And um, I found out so much about the viciousness of this dog, um, their jaws lock together once mm -hmm. they bite and they have to be pried apart. So once they bite and they're locked, they're in place. And I also found out about this particular dog, that this dog had been trained to uh, fight. To attack? To, to attack, to fight. Uh, the neighbors began to tell us how he had been held from a tire to build up his jaws how the, the, the guy that on the dog had other pit bulls that he would fight this one with the other ones and excuse me that he engaged in um, uh, uh, fighting pit bulls that was part of a recreation that he was engaged in that I had no knowledge of didn't know the gentleman didn't know the neighbor had never seen him before and then they began to tell us how the dog had bitten an ups 
um, deliverer, how the dog had killed another neighbor's cat, and all this came out um, after the fact. Um, I also want to impress upon parents to really watch where your children mm -hmm. are playing. Mm -hmm. Be careful where you allow your children to go and venture mm -hmm. off to, look around, uh, case the environment before you allow them to freely go into it. Um, I um, also want to say that um, I was so devastated that um, I had no fight in me. I, I really didn't have any fight in me against the uh, person that owned the dog, um, against the city or any of that. So um, I just kind of let things go as they, as they went, and a neighbor uh, was so angered by it, she began to draw up a petition uh, to the city. And what came out of that is that now in, I think, the city of Hawthorne, I don't know whether that petition extended, you have to have a fence X amount of feet high mm -hmm. to um, own a dog. Um, so they can't uh, get out. A pit bull, mm -hmm. right, so they can't get out. Mm -hmm. and, did, you yeah. feel, did you feel bitter after, after you got over the kind of the numbness of of having that happen to your son, did you feel bitter towards this man, or how did you deal with the? Did you have the feelings of bitterness towards this man, or how did you deal with them, or uh, did you have to give that to God when you um, came to the Lord, or how was your feelings towards this person? I really, I really didn't feel any bitterness towards him. Um, I really felt that he had a problem. I found out later that he did have a problem with drugs, that something was really um, wrong with him inside. And um, after it was all done and over with, all he simply said to us was that he, was that he wanted his dogs back. He had no and remorse. He had no remorse whatsoever. And um, that kind of let me know that something was wrong with his uh, mentality. Right. Um, and, 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 it, and I'm not sure what caused it. it may have been the drugs that caused him to be um, callous and, and cold-hearted as he was. Mm -hmm. But um, even this, to this very day, I have no bitterness towards him. I pray right now that he has uh, found Jesus and that he has accepted Jesus in his heart. And uh, my prayer is that the blessings of God be upon him. Mm -hmm. That's my, my prayer for, towards him. And uh, Rosalind, I, I know that God uh, took that tragedy and did turn it into his joy and his peace and his blessing, and he lifted you out of that, that pit that he brought you out of, of sorrow and pain. And um, I know that uh, Beth and I have always admired you uh, when we've gone to church together, the sweetness of your spirit and the brightness of your smile. And uh, when we saw your, God gave you, God allowed that to happen but the lord did give you a wonderful little son you want to share a little bit about and now your... god's replaced everything <laughs> right. that that has happened you lost one son but god gave you gave you another son that's just such a blessing and he loves the lord you can just see it on his face and yes, i does. remember ros and uh willing that you guys were in a car accident at right. the church we were going to at the time and she would she would come to church right after he got in that accident and bring him into the house of the Lord. He he had a, a cast from the waist down, and she'd wheel him in in the little in the little wagon. And and to this day, I still remember that that you know no matter what you go through, God gives you the strength to make it through no matter what. And you know just and if you really love the Lord, you're determined. You are just determined to make it into the house of God no matter what happened. You 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 wheeled him into church. And and I just, that, I mean, touched my heart, you know, knowing that uh, Rosalind's love for the Lord has, has not changed. And, and um, I just, I appreciate, I appreciate her and her smile. And, and I could always, when we go to church, I always saw the peace of God and the joy of God on Rosalind's face. So well, I know. The son you ministered is, I, I'm going to share in, in part of your testimony, to God be the glory. Um, to him be the glory indeed. Uh, my son was prophesied, first of all. I, I, there was pain in even seeing parents with their children and walking around with their children after that. But uh, the, the Lord restored and, and blessed me with the son after six miscarriages. 
and uh, he healed my womb. Uh, another minister of the gospel saw my womb being healed in the spirit realm, and I didn't understand it at the time because I was mm -hmm. a babe in Christ. But now I see um, the path that God took, where he brought me from and the path that he had me on at the time. But being a babe, I couldn't see it then. But um, his name is Nathan David Ben, and um, he is um, eight years old at this time. And he came here um, with the anointing of God on his life. He got a lot of prayer in the womb. And um, at four years old, he received the Holy Spirit. He had already accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior prior to that. And um, he, uh, at four years old, was professing to be a doctor and a preacher, and he still holds fast to that. So I know that that had kept God that put that in his spirit. And he's eight, and he's still saying he's going to be a doctor and a preacher. Yeah. I did not tell him to do that. That's God. That's God 100%. So what well, the devil stole, God restored seven times over, because mm -hmm. in Nathan I have seven times what the enemy stole from me, and I praise God for mm -hmm. the precious little boy. And I praise God for my husband, Norman Ben, that stood by my side through all mm -hmm. this and still stands by my side. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I just thank God for where he has me now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm going to continue to let him be Lord of my life. Mm -hmm. But um, I can't say that I know the sufferings of anybody else but I can share mine. That God brought you through. Exactly. And, can bring, and how he bring brought me others through. others through that are going through the pain of losing a loved one or a right. tragedy of someone being killed or murdered mm -hmm. or, right. you know, you, um, like a lot, you probably had a lot of people probably come in your path to share with you that they made it through that type of tragedy and gave you the hope to go on because I know when others go through the same thing it's it's God allows it to happen for a reason right. so that you can help you know help their um, burdens and you know help them you know lift them up and give them hope you right. know because hope is what we really mm -hmm. need today That's it. Yeah. you know and, and I want to say something to the people that will be viewing this program that there is a predestined purpose that God has for your life Hopelessness comes because we don't realize we have a purpose, but God has placed you here in this earth realm for his purpose. And when you come to Jesus and allow him to be Lord of your, your life, he will move you into the predestined purpose for your life. Mm -hmm. And hope comes along with that. We have hopelessness because we don't see purpose. And the enemy is out there. You have an adversary. There's an adversary, a liar, a stealer, and a cheater. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy, and he is the devil. And that's what he comes to do. And that's where you are right now in your situation. You're vulnerable to him, but Jesus has his hands outstretched to you, saying, mm -hmm. come, come, mm -hmm. come. The door is open for you to receive mm -hmm. me as Lord and Savior. And Romans 10, 9, and 10 says, if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus died and was raised from the dead, that we will be saved. And that's all you need to do is make that confession today. And the Lord has put somebody else in my life that had a similar tragedy in her life. She lost an 18-year-old son. Her name is Betty Pierce, Sister Betty Pierce, and she's a member of my church. And She's here, she's um, here with us today, with us today. <laughs> and I praise the Lord for her and her support here today. And um, her son, she lost at the age of 18 to cancer. And um, we just kind of connected in the spirit realm as soon as we met. Mm -hmm. And um, I began to share with her how God brought me through with uh, the death of my son. And I can see the Lord bringing her through um, and strengthening her. And she's doing with such joy and such strength that mm -hmm. she's been a blessing to me and a support to me as well. Um, I could go on and on and on with the people that have been uh, so supportive to me. But um, I just want to glorify God. Mm -hmm. I, I call not a lot of names because I really want God to get the glory out of this. And I want you to see Jesus in this situation and see mm -hmm. Jesus in your life. Mm -hmm. and in your trial that you're going through because it doesn't seem like you're going to make it through but you will make it through with Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, this isn't Jesus. the end. 
you know, this it is, is just the, the beginning, beginning because well. and, well, and heaven is, see him again and heaven heaven is yes. real and yes, uh, the is. reuniting with our loved ones is so real, mm -hmm. so powerful, so it's a, it's a, God gives us that blessed I'm looking to forward. see him again. I'm Amen. looking forward to the day um, when I can connect back with uh, my son in heaven, uh, but um, I really uh, pray that <laughs> Jesus this return tarries because there's so many out there that are lost and don't know him and I really uh, desire that um, the people that are lost have an opportunity to receive Jesus Amen. as their Lord and Savior Amen. before he comes back it's critical mm -hmm. we're in the last hour we're in the last days of his coming and it's a very very critical time and if you're going to receive him now is the time tomorrow is not promised Tomorrow is not promised. So if you're going to do it, when you hear or view this program, you need to do it at that time. Mm -hmm. At that time. Amen. At that time. Yes. Don't wait. Amen. Don't wait. Don't wait. Mm -hmm. And folks, Hallelujah. if you've got those that you love and are dear to your heart and to your, to your life, you know, take this time this evening to thank God for them and to, to just bring them close to your own heart and to just really remember that, you know, we never know if when it's going to be the last time we see someone right. we never know when it'll be the last the last embrace the last time you kiss your children goodbye when they right. walk out the door we never know that mm -hmm. and that's why so many waste so many waste precious moments and time and right. strife and so many other things and teenagers mm -hmm. you never know when you're going to have mom and dad mm -hmm. and, and uh, the same goes for parents and in the shower this morning the lord showed me trap doors and, and minds like we're walking around and, and we you think that everything is okay and everything is, is well with us, but you never know where the next trap door is or where you're gonna fall through and the enemy Amen. will try to consume you. You never know where the next mine is, where you're gonna step on the next mine and, and the enemy will try to consume you. So don't wait while the opportunity is here do it. That's what I wanted to share with you. Yeah. And, and, and it, because, yeah. um, and you know, it, the Lord above everybody knows exactly how you feel because He gave His only Son. That's right. You That's know, to right. die on the cross for all of us. You know. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, we kind of have something in common. Both <laughs> of us had our only Son that that um, we lost, and um, but He He freely gave His life. Yeah. Mine was due to. Um, uh, something that was um, out of my control, but uh, Jesus died because He wanted to die for mm -hmm. us because He loves us so much. Yeah. And um, but He understands your your pain yes, and the suffering yes, you went does. through. Yes, He does. You know that's why God's the only one that really understands what you're going through. He's the only one that really can heal your yes. broken heart. He's the only, really, the only one that can heal your grief and your despair that you're going through today and he understands it you know he says that every hair of our head is numbered and he said if if he cares about the sparrow that falls from the sky so much does he care about us and what we're going through you know and god wants to uplift us out of out of that grief and sorrow because i know um from my own experience that that there's sometimes where there's just days that you just think how am i gonna you know make it to the next day and it's just just know, just praying to God, saying, God, give me the strength. And that's why that song, Strength of My Life, is so important mm -hmm. to me because it's that strength of God every day to help you make it through that day to know that God has a purpose, God has a calling on your life to, to help others in need, help other people that are going through the exact same thing at the exact same time as you. And I know the Lord he's faithful that's right that <laughs> i can say is god is faithful no matter what you're going through that's right and galatians uh, 3 and 28 says there's neither jew nor greek there's neither bond nor free there's neither male nor female for ye are all one in christ jesus so god doesn't see color he doesn't see religion he doesn't see any of that he will take us in whatever state we're in he took me in my alcoholic drug abusive state my um uh, hopeless state 
and I was talking to Donna earlier, and, and she, she said it so beautifully. He took me, and he just drew me to his bosom and held me close and brought me through this thing. And he'll do the same for you. He loves you. We love you. And we want you to be blessed in every area of your life. Jesus said he came that we, have made, that we may have life and that life more abundantly. Satan came to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus came that you and I may have life and that life more abundantly. Abundant, abundantly. So receive him and mm -hmm. step into the abundance mm -hmm. of life through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, and God brings us through these experiences just to, to mold us and shape us like diamonds, you know, mm -hmm. put you through the fire to really make you the person that God wants you to be, mm -hmm. you know, because sometimes there's things in us and our hearts that we don't even know that God wants to shape and mold us into that perfect diamond so that he can use us, mm -hmm. you know, because sometimes we, we do things that, and we don't understand what's going on, and this minister was ministering to me and I was listening to one of his it's called the healing word of God and how he was saying that you know God does things some way and and we're like God why is this going mm -hmm. on I don't understand this and he makes a way in the wilderness he makes a way in the desert places he mm -hmm. and you know and that's mm -hmm. when you really know it's God because it's when we give up all you know we give up all hope when we give up in our own fleshly abilities to go on it's when we know that God's there mm -hmm. you know and we know that it's God's hope and it's the strength of God it's not in our own strength it's only what God is doing you know and that God's capable of holding us up with and, his right hand you know and I want to say that um, at the onset of this uh, happening I really couldn't even speak about it so <laughs> I know that I'm healed because I'm sitting before you sharing this with you with a smile on my face so the healing process has uh, is complete in me mm -hmm. and I want you to know that it is written in the scriptures that when the enemy comes in like a flood, flood the Lord will lift up a standard mm -hmm. against him on your mm -hmm. behalf mm -hmm. hallelujah he did it for me yeah. he'll do it for you yes, and he will. I am I am so full of joy I love the Lord with all my heart and with everything in me, and there is nothing in this world that can pull me off course with my walk with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I will always remember what he did for me. I will always remember how he brought me out of the muck and the mire. Hallelujah. I can give no other glory and no other honor ex to anyone else except to him. Oh, praise God. Praise the Lord. Oh, I just wanted to share a scripture with uh, the people out there uh, this evening. Um, you know, David lost a son. In fact, he lost two sons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but King David that wrote this psalm um, speaks in Psalms 84. Uh, it's one of my favorite scriptures, the fifth verse. It said, Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them. Mm who passing through the valley of Baca mm. makes it a well. And that, literally that means that the valley of Baca was a valley of weeping. And you know, n none of us like to go into that valley. But when Sorry. God takes us into that valley, the scripture says that God will make it a well. And it goes on and it says that the rain also will fill that well with pools. And it's the pools that are literally turned into joy. It may be our weeping, we end up with, we think, oh, these tears are just mm -hmm. overflowing. Mm -hmm. They're taking over my life. Mm -hmm. um, and all of these things, but God said that that'll turn into a pool of joy, mm -hmm. a literal pool of joy. It has for mm -hmm. me, Don. And um, it has for me. as we go on down here in the next scripture, it says, and in the seventh verse, it says, they go from strength to strength. Mm. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. Yes. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. He said, oh God, oh Lord God of the hosts, of all the armies of heaven. He said, hear my prayer. Give ear, oh God of Jacob, mm -hmm. Selah. And he was uh, here reminding God that he was the God of Jacob. He was the God who took, uh, met Jacob uh, at the uh, struggle in prayer. And he said, and he, he prevailed with God. And he said, he met him there when he was nothing and he had nothing. Mm -hmm. And that God took him. He was a deceiver and a subplanner and a scoundrel, but God took him in that place 
and brought him into his marvelous grace and his love and his comforts and his glory and his power. And that's what God does for us. He right. takes us from these valleys of weeping. He takes us through, brings us out. And, right. and then turns them all into joy. And by the world standards, uh, when you people Backwards. see you weeping, yeah, <laughs> yeah. they feel that you're weak and you're not you're trusting God That's because right. you're crying and you're weeping. But I want you to know also that there's healing in your tears. Yeah. Oh, amen. There's amen. a release. When you cry, you're releasing that hurt and releasing amen. that pain. So that doesn't mean that you're not trusting God and that you're not still believing God just mm -hmm. because you weep mm -hmm. and you cry. And God in his word says that he bottles our tears up. Yeah. Amen. So he has those tears on record that we're crying. Mm -hmm. In Revelation, it says they're sweet perfume. Mm. Our, our prayers and our tears are they're sweet. Yes. They're a sweet smelling savior yes. to, to God. God, mm -hmm. God loves a tender hearted person. Yes, Amen. he does. Yes, he does. And if you've you know been watching this show, and you really feel like a tug is at your heart to accept the Lord, you want to really know what this. Jesus is that we're talking, who this Jesus is we're talking about. Well, he wants to be real to you today. He wants to come in and change your life like he changed Rosalind, mm -hmm. like he changed mine and my mom's life. You know, um, today you need the Lord's strength. And if you want to experience that and accept Jesus in your heart, just, you know, you know, pray with us right now to accept Jesus Christ and, and accept him into your life. Let him change your life. Let him come in and heal your soul because Hallelujah. your soul is what's going to live for eternity with G either in hell or heaven. And you have to make that decision. And, and um, we just ask right now that I'm going to ask Rosalind to say a prayer for the people out there that want to accept Jesus. And we're just going to say a prayer and then we're going to close out and just if you receive Jesus Christ or you've been touched by this program, please you, buy us at Post Office Box 4743. Go ahead, Rosalind. Thank you, Lord God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just praise you and thank you, Lord God, for those that are listening to this program right now, Lord God, and are viewing it. We praise you and thank you, Lord God, that you have caused them to be in the place where they are, to hear this program and to see it, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we just ask that their hearts be opened up to receive you, Jesus, as their Lord and Savior. And right now, if you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to ask that you repeat after me. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus died and was raised from the dead. And I know I am saved because with my heart I believe unto righteousness and with my mouth I confess unto salvation and I know according to the word of God I am saved Amen. just by doing that. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. For those Thank Father you, that will come to you. Seal their salvation you, Lord. Lord God with your precious blood. Order their Thank footsteps you. Lord God in the direction and the path that you would have them to go. Hallelujah, the weapon may form, Lord God, against them, but let it not prosper in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord God, that you will bring healing and restoration. Hallelujah to those, Lord God, that receive yes, Jesus Lord. into their hearts, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And we will always remember, Lord God, it is you that get all the praise and all the glory and all the honor for you and you alone are the worthy mm -hmm. one. You're the only one that gave your only begotten son that we may be saved. And we thank you thank and we you bless Lord. you for that. In Jesus', in Jesus name. Name. Amen. 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 And for my last song that I'm going to do this evening is called The Strength of My Life. And I know through hard times that we can't make it unless we have the strength of Jesus to make, help us through it. And I'm just so glad that I have God's strength to help me through the things that I go through. And, and every day I need his strength. And I just pray that you ask for God's strength to keep, to keep you.
The thoughts of facing one more day overwhelms me and I began to weep. Cause I
thank you for joining us this evening and we'll be back on Thursday at five o'clock. Please join us again and I just